Hello, our Hebrew nation. My name is Daria, and I would like to introduce the love of my life, my wife, Aisha. Hello. We've been married for 15 years, and we are the founders of the Hebrew Israelites Recommence Organization. We have been commissioned by the Most High Yah to galvanize his Hebrew people in preparation for our second exodus. We're going back to our home nation, y'all, Israel. All right. Same introduction for a year. The only thing changed, we got another year under our belt in marriage. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello, our Hebrew nation. Okay. Starting off, first, we want to say we love you. Mwah. Our people. Shalom to our people. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, we, we're we on here. We haven't been on here together in a month. You put up some videos. Yeah, just some um, side dishes to go with my chicken. <laughs> Mention that chicken, wow, babe. Our people they think chicken going viral, honey. Yeah. Wow. Being Popeyes for fifty years, and they come out with a sandwich, and they act like it's it's the new gold rush. It is so. Lines, I, I I read somewhere lines lines down the street and all that. Kind now of we stuff. said we weren't gonna talk about this in the video, I but know, I knew but you wasn't ready to help I, yourself I, <laughs> because that's so ignorant. I wonder <clears> what they put in that chicken. For us to be, I, and I can't even tell you what it tastes like because I've just been enjoying my wife's um, delicious cooking. cooking <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, it's and it's nothing wrong with chicken, but going viral when we got so much shit going on within our nation right now. Excuse me, I'm sorry. So much, so many yeah, things. Yeah, so many things. I mean, I'm trying to. I'm, yeah, we discussed that too. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in my cheese spirit. I ain't trying to yell and, and curse, curse and right. stuff like that. And they talking about chicken. But um, that's not what this video is about. We not talk, but we are very disappointed in you all going viral about chicken. But I have to give a shout out to a lot of our Hebrew nation that have been countering this yes ridiculous chicken sandwich because they saw saw it, for viral what it was movement. a distraction to mm -hmm. keep our 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 focus off the agenda and mm -hmm. what's really important exactly and what's going on in the world other than putting something in your mouth. Exactly. Okay. So that's all we're gonna say about that chicken. It's yeah. that's that's beneath us to even discuss. That's ridiculous, you guys. Really? And you know what? If you're gonna promote chicken, at least promote a black owned chicken. Harold's business. chicken. Right. Yeah, Harold's chicken, chicken is black owned. Yeah. I mean, wait, that's more in the Midwest than in Chicago. But, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. I'm pretty Kenny's, sure Kenny's Kenny's ribs Kenny's ribs and, and chicken. It, I'm pretty sure you got a black owned chicken shack somewhere in your state. Y'all ain't promoting that, making them go viral, put money in, in, in your own people's pocket, and, and hopefully they will do, as they increase, they will do more for the community. You're not doing that. It's nothing wrong with having fun, but you have to be more level-headed. Like, why would you promote a white-owned chicken establishment, and we got so much going on in our nation, stop. And as from what I read, and I hope I'm getting this, this total right, this, in less than a week, Popeye's gross $23.5 million off this chicken rush. You know what um, our nation could do with $23.5 million? Do you know what this organi organization could do with just a million? A million We're trying to liberate you. And I don't think we've gotten $23 million in the last week in no. doni donation. No, we actually, we got a total, grand total of $0.00 and zero cent in the last in the, week. In the last week. Actually, we have gotten some donations, but... What you all need to understand, it takes money to do what we're doing, even though it's fake Esau's money, and it takes travel. We've got to go around to nations, but you all going around talking about chicken sandwiches, and we talking about the real shit, our true liberation, okay? And God is keeping track of this foolishness, okay? Are you serious? And shout out to AO Nation. She, my wife, has never watched your show, but I know that's one of your 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 terms. Are you serious? And I just want you to know she's not biting off you. Yeah, I, I never heard. He, of I watch you, so I, I just wanted to let you know that I know you watch us from time to time. So just let you know she's not stealing your thing. She has never seen Aww. your pod, your your podcast. But um, just give me shout, and I'm giving a shout out to AO Nation. I love what you're doing. Keep it up, brother. Okay. Yeah. Amen. So that, that's what we have to say to that. You guys going out buying chicken sandwiches, y'all need to give something to the organization. 
You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I know that everything we saying has been biblically prophesied, but God is doing it in modern terms. We had to um, set up an organization to get this work done. We're not going through Esau's court system. No. But you and I still have to go around to the nations. We have to handle kingdom business. That takes fake paper money at this point, and they're going around buying chicken sandwiches. Yeah. Instead of giving $20. Yeah. But that's not what we mad about. What we more mad about is why the hell is chicken sandwiches going viral among our people? Mm. Wow. But we love you. We love you. Okay, we didn't mean to come out the gate just getting on you like that, but it is what it is. Yeah. It's a sad state in the Hebrew nation right now for a lot of you. <laughs> and that's what we want to talk about, okay? Because we came on tonight... The title of this lesson is called The Cold Part 3. We have The Cold Part 1. We have The Cold Part 2. You all need to go back through the, those two where we go cover the Whitty Lynch letter. And now we have The Cold Part 3. Okay. Go back to less, um, The Cold Part 1 and The Cold Part 2 because from here I'm picking it right up. This is titled The Cold Part 3. Okay. For our nation. And so... The Lord had given us some things to speak to you all about, and they give us more things to mm -hmm. talk more about. But the Lord had given us that. And so we have some things that we need to discuss with the nation from the Most High Yah. Okay, he has some concerns. So I need you all to stay with me here. I need you all to put on your thicker caps. This might be a longer video. I'm not sure. But I need you all to stay with me. I'm going to come from a scripture here. You know we're going to break this down real simple. Okay. Listen up, my Hebrew nation. Once again, we love you. I don't just say... I, the reason why I say that so much is because I mean it. Like, you don't understand. Besides the Most High Yah Elohim. Besides my husband and my children. I, I think and breathe my people. God has given us a special love, Right? for mm -hmm. our nation so when i say i love you that that is not to just say that like we 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 love you in, in a way the, the way i like to equate it is like that two-part lyric i'm gonna paraphrase it and i'm gonna it's like you don't want to die and the most high do not want to kill you mm -hmm. but don't force his hand right don't do that right you don't want to die and he really don't want to kill you there's no other nation I'd rather be a part of. I love my people. We love our people. And with that, we're going to get into this lesson. Yeah. Okay. I'm a nigga. He's a nigga. She's a <laughs> nigga. We some niggas. Wouldn't you like to be a, a nigga, nigga too? too. <laughs> yeah. Stop. That's the, that's the beauty of being on the right side of history at this time. Yeah. Rejoice it. Yeah. Rejoice and be glad. Daughter Zion. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, let's, let's get right into this. We're going to get right to the, to, to the lesson. The cold part three. Okay, we had the cold part one. We had the cold part two. We went over the Woody Lynch ladder. And now we got to go over a little bit more. Stay with, my, with me, my people. I'm going to break this down real simple. Honey, if you can turn to Psalms chapter 83, verses 1 through 8. I may stop you in mm -hmm. the beginning to do a little background here. Okay. Okay. Psalms 83, verses 1 through 8. And it's under the heading, a song, a psalm of Asaph. And this was a prophet, a son that was under the rulership of King David, our forefather. Okay. Okay. O oh God, do not remain silent. Do not turn a deaf ear. Do not stand aloof, O oh God. See how your enemies growl, how your foes rear their heads. Okay, let me do a little background here. Asaph was, I said, he was a, 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 a armor bearer. He was a, a prophet to King David. Psalms, the book of Psalms was written around 2,900 years ago, 2,900 years ago. And what Asaph was predicting, along with King David, what would happen eventually to Israel. Man, you at this time, when they read it 20, 2,900 years ago, Israel was on top. We were very wealthy. We were very prosperous. The Lord was ruling this earth through his people. So, 2,900 years ago, almost 3,000 years ago, Asap predicted 
along with King David, what will happen to Israel. And what he's saying right here, this is what these two scriptures mean. Lord, don't remain silent. Don't turn a deaf ear. Your enemies are growling against Israel. So he wasn't talking about at that time, mm -hmm. 2,900 years ago. The Lord was showing him what would happen almost 3,000 years prior, Late, meaning later. 29, 2019. Yeah. 15, 25 to 2019. Right. That's what he was showing them. Okay, because you got to understand to them, that seemed foreign because Israel was on top. Israel was wealthy. Israel was prosperous. Mm -hmm. And they looking 3,000 years ahead as prophets and saying, whoa, this is what's going to happen to Israel. Mm -hmm. And so Aesop is beginning to pray about, God, what's going to happen? To, what are you saying going to happen to Israel in 3,000 years or 2,500 years? Okay. Mm -hmm. He probably didn't know the exact time. You know, God's not big on dates, but he knew it was in the future because it wasn't for Israel at that time because Israel was the opposite. It was very um, prosperous. Mm -hmm. And now we very effed up. <laughs> right. And he saw that. Okay. So go ahead, honey, with three. It says, see how your enemies reread re re it. I did a little background here and now my, my husband's going to continue. Verse three, with cunning, they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. See that? He's saying, with, he's saying, see how your enemies growl, how your foes rear their head. He's predicting what will happen. The Lord is showing him what's going to happen in the future. And he's saying, we're going to have enemies with cunning. They're going to con come together and be cunning, and they're going to aspire against Israel. Conspire. Conspire against Israel. Thank you, honey. And they're going to plot against those you cherish, which is what? Israel. Israel, daughter Zion. And daughter Zion. Okay, keep going, honey. Come, they say. Let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. There you go. I'm sorry. I had to hit my Bible. I said I wasn't going to do that. Today. Yeah, you did say that. <laughs> there you go. This scripture is extremely important. We're going to keep coming back to this through this whole lesson. Come, they say. Let us destroy Israel as a nation. Let us destroy them as a nation. So that their so, name will be remembered re no more. So thank you, honey. So that their name will be remembered no more. We're going to come back to that. Remember I tell you that? When I tell you we're going to come back to that, I mean that. That's the whole gist of this video that the Lord had us speak. And okay. that's a part of the, the viral Popeye's chicken. So Israel's name will be remembered no more. <laughs> drown out the prophets. Drown out the prophets. Drown out the prophets. Yeah. So that Israel's name will be remembered no more. That's very important. We're going to come back to that. Okay? We're going to come back to that. Psalms chapter 83, verse 4. Okay, so let's continue with verse 5. Verse 5. With one mind, they plot together. They form an alliance against you. With one mind, they plot together, which means a bunch of nations got together, and with one mind, they plotted together to come against Israel. Esau! The servant of David predicted this, prophesied this 2,900 years ago that this was going to happen. It didn't happen in 1525 because that's when the first slaves was taken over mm -hmm. to the Caribbean islands. We were taken over in 1619, but our, but our, but our, but our people in the islands, Trinidad, the, uh, South America, Brazil, and all of that, they were taken 100 years before us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's saying that with one man, some nations going to plot together. They're going to form an alliance. Man, you, Psalms was written in 2900 BC. So for all you reprobate atheists, explain, you Hebrew so-called atheists, you, you know better. Explain how did the Bible predict almost 3,000 years ago what would happen 1,500 years later. And that shit actually happened. Google it. Did we not go into slavery 15, in 1525? Yeah. Okay. Need I say more? Okay, but we but this is fairy tales. Oh yeah, that's what they, yeah. <laughs> we love you. Okay, let's keep it going. So when one man of the nations plot together, they form an alliance against Israel. This is what he's predicting would happen. Three three thousand years ago, and it came to pass fifteen hundred years later, and history proves it if you Google it. Okay. All right, verse six continues. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagrites. Babylon, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia, with the people of Tyre. Even Assyria has joined them to reinforce Lot's descendants. Okay, let me break that down real simple. He's naming the nations that conspired against Israel. 
to take Israel down so that Israel names will be remembered no more. And to make this very plain in modern terms, the Ishmaelites and all is none but the Arabs, the Assyrians, the Philistia, Tyre is nothing but the European nations, and the Africans. Mm -hmm. Some Africans in the African continent. Three nations was going to conspire. Africa, um, for these special people going around talking about the freaking Moors. Mm -hmm. Okay, they part of the motherfuckers that conspired to sell us. You comedic, so-called comedic Egyptian brothers. That's complete bull crap. Um, so you got Egyptians, you've got, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you got Africans, the um, Arabs, Arabs, and European nations. These are the three nations that mm -hmm. conspired to take Israel down that he predicted in 2900, 2,900 years ago. Okay? You get it? About 900 BC, 1012 BC, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. Okay? Google it. Since what I'm talking fairy tales, Google it and tell me did that not happen? They too lazy to Google it. They rather it's so it's easier to just drive and stay in the, in a line for 50 minutes for a piece of chicken <laughs> than to get on your computer for two minutes and Google some information that can unlock your the, brain. I'm giving you the dates like I did in the last video when the Bible predicted when the book was written and then I'm and then history is a thousand or fifteen hundred years later. You know what, babe? The only thing that um. ASAP did not um, predict is I see them forming long lines for chicken. <laughs> fried chicken. Fried, fried chicken. chicken. And well, I love fried chicken. It's part of our it's part of who we are. That's that's fine. That's no problem. But dang. I mean really? Wow. They not black on. <laughs> that's so silly. Okay. So now, so we let me do a back let me do a, a, a total summary of this scripture. So basically what ASAP is prophesying, he's saying that some nations are gonna conspire against God's chosen people. And they said, We're going to come together so that Israel is remembered no more. The names that we just called out in those scriptures, um, the you know, the Ishmaelites, Tyr, uh Assyria, Phastalia, Edom, Amalek. you know. Amalek, those are that's nothing but the African, European, and Arab nations that conspired to do what? And this is very important because we're gonna be here for a while. Let's go back to Psalms 83 and 4, honey. Come, come, they say. Let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. There you go. I'm sorry I had to hit my Bible because that's so powerful. There you go. We're going to be here for a minute. Hell, it, hell, that scripture right there should be taped on everybody's mirror in the bathroom. When you wake up, just know every day you go out your house, come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. For all of you who refuse to call yourself a Hebrew, your ethnicity, mm -hmm. for all of you who refuse to um, take a uh, stake a claim for your wealth, mm -hmm. Your God-given wealth, your Solomon's gold, our land. Just understand, every day you leave your Hebrew behind, whether you call yourself a Hebrew or not, every you day you, you leave your door, the world, the enemies of God, this is what they have waiting for you once you exit your home. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel name will be remembered no more. Keep that. And understand this. What me and my wife is called to do, we're uh, anointed to do, was to galvanize his Hebrew nation. So again, the enemies of God is still on their mission to destroy Israel so that the name is remembered no more. And that's what brings us to our next point. Once again, Psalms. 83 and 4. It was prophesied this is what they would do. Cut as a as as different nations, the African nations, they they, they determined to be African when they enslaved your Hebrew hands. So That's why they right. burning now. Right. And we love them. And guess what? When we take back over, China gonna get the hell out of Africa. You understand? But right now we need to deal with us as a Hebrew nation. Yeah. 
Did you gonna say something? Honey? I was just gonna say, uh, well, I would, I would think that the the fire flames on Africa right now is is gonna tell them, hey, it's not good for us to be here. Let's go back home. We just lost this investment. We built all this shit up here. Uh, China. Let's just, let's just um, count our losses. That's, but that's okay. When we take back over, everybody, the Bible gave us a mandate. Everybody yeah. go home to their own nation. So they're going to get the hell out of Africa anyway. That's why the world going to be so much more peaceful. It's not going to be taken over. We're going to get to that. Okay. Yeah. So we're going back to Psalms 83, 4. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation. This is what the African, Arabian, and European nations did. So that Israel name is remembered no more. And remember, I got excited about that. I hit my Bible about that. I said, let's talk about that. And we're about to talk about that right now. Yes, And honey. don't forget um, um, verse 8 when it says, even Assyria. You know, Assyria represents... Um, Germany. Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Germans. And that's who over in Britain In now. Britain, yeah. They're supposed to be... That, that's, the, that's your house of Windsor. House they're of not Windsor. even British. Yeah, they're not even British. They're German. They're German. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you're talking about. Assyria got them. Yeah. Because Britain run this shit. Not America, by the way. Yeah. For all these people think they know so much. You don't know Hebrew history. Stop talking. Right. Okay. So, let's talk about how they did that. Let's talk about how they come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name will be remembered no more. Now, remember in 70 AD, once I say, again, I say Google it if you don't believe it, especially for my reprobate atheists. We love you. We, we hope you get better. Okay. Rome came and surrounded Jerusalem, the remnant of Israel that was standing, and took them down and tried to genocide. They killed over 2 million of us. Our people migrated into the west coast of Africa. And that's why God has a special heart for Africa, because they did receive us mm -hmm. as immigrants. But we were immigrants in Africa. That was never our homeland. When Rome came to take over Jerusalem, we migrated down into the west coast of Africa, okay, in 70 AD. Google it. This is history. The Bible predicted it would happen, and did it not happen? Yep. Okay. Over 1,500 years later. And so we migrated into the west coast of Africa in 70 AD, and that's where we were. We called it Negro land, okay? So we talking about, let's talk about how they did that. How did they... Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. Rome came to try and genocide us. We might, they killed over 2 million of us, but most of us migrated down into the west coast of Africa. Africa allowed us to come in and we set up on the west coast. That's why your Atlantic slave trade was set up from where? The west the coast. Because that's where we were. They were looking for Hebrews. Africans weren't selling other Africans. Africans were selling Hebrews. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to get to that. I don't want to confuse you. So, how did they try and um, destroy them as a nation so that Israel name will be remembered no more? That's the first point. They tried to come when they stole out our gold in 70 AD. Go back to Lesson 12, Part 1, and work your way back up. When we migrated down into the west coast of Africa... That's what they tried to do. They tried to genocide us. It didn't work. We went to Africa. Because that's what Jesus meant when he said in the book of Matthew 24, head to the hills. Yeah. He's talking about Africa. Okay, and that's where we went. And then they tried ignoring us. Okay, all the nations tried to ignore us, including Africa. But then we ended up building up Timbuktu. Timbuktu. Because we're the most high nation. We talented like that. Right. Okay. In 1525, okay. They said, okay, we're just going to enslave them and make them forget who they are. You understand? So once again, let's go back to, I told you this, this verse is very important. The nations conspired, Africa, the European nations, as well as the Arabs said, what does verse 4 say they, they conspired to do against Israel? Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. There you go. Let me explain something to you. You have to understand, when we were in Israel, God ruled. There's no reason for Israel besides God to rule down here through his people. Like I said, once we take back over, that's your end times. 
Asia, I mean, China gonna get their ass out of Africa. Everybody gonna go home to their own nation. We're gonna do honest trade. China, Russia, ain't nobody, all those, ain't nobody taking over nobody territory. Ain't nobody taking over nobody shit. We're gonna do honest trade. This is how it's gonna be done. So you gotta understand, Israel, God ruled the world through Israel, through okay? his people, and through honest trade and things like mm -hmm. that. Well, guess what? The other nations decided we're sick of God and we're sick of His rules. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you get rid of God? You get rid of Israel, his biggest testament. Mm -hmm. And in another scripture, they said that Israel, God has left them. Mm -hmm. You know, we were, un we were beginning to be under the curse because we had turned from him. So they knew that they could conquer us through war. Right. And that's why they said, well, let's conspire together and let's just get rid of them. That way we get rid of Israel. We get well, rid of their guy all together. All the, yeah. We don't want to do things right and just anymore. We want them. Mayhem. Chaos. Exactly. Debauchery. And, and Esau headed it up, by Freak the way. Mix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's why they said, let's conspire. So they tried to genocide us in 70 AD. That didn't work. They've been trying to genocide us ever since. It just doesn't work. They said, okay, let's enslave them. So the second part of that was, let's make them forget who they are. Okay? Because you can't have... If we remember we Israelites, then you can't get rid of Israel. Exactly. Right? So they, they, let's make them forget who they are. That's in 1525. We're going to tell them that they were from a bunch of, they, they prisoners of war from a bunch of scattered tribes around Africa. And we don't, that's, that's what, now my thing is this, Africa was writing before Europe. Mm -hmm. So what was these records of war? If we were prisoners of war from different tribes in Africa, mm -hmm. that's a damn lie. They knew who they was coming to get. And they knew they was coming to get Jacob. They knew they were coming to get Hebrews and Africans knew that they weren't selling other Africans. That's why they was able to do it. They, with a good conscience, they were selling Hebrews. We were immigrants in Africa. Even though we had been there over a thousand years, they still call one of our tribes, we have the Igbo tribe, the Ashanti tribe, the Limbo tribe, they still call one of our tribes, it's called stranger. It means an Africa stranger, mm -hmm. which means, you know, an immigrant. Okay? You know how some Latinos are over here, no matter how many generations they're over here, they still seen as immigrants? That's how Hebrews are seen, seen in, in Africa. It's no, it don't matter how many years we've been over there. They still see us as they not us. Right. That's just fact, people. Don't shoot the messenger. Okay. So let me let me break this down for you real simple. I'm going to come back for a circle like I've been telling you. In the Bible, it was predicted that the other nations would get together and say, come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel name is remembered no more. They tried to genocide us in 70 AD. We the most has nation. Of course, that did not work. So then they, they tried to ignore us, but we were building up Timbuktu. That did not work. So they said, let's enslave them and make them forget who they are. This is very important. Cause this is this is this is relevant even for today mm -hmm. okay you have to understand even with colonization in africa and all the white supremacy the beasts all over the world we're the only people that was made was beat and made to forget our language our culture and where we were from right mm -hmm. they didn't do that to the africans the arabs the indians they, um, they didn't do that to anybody but us, and this is why. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. The whole goal was up for us to forget that we were Israelites. And we ran the whole world. We were the wealthiest people in nation, and we were God's chosen people, and he ruled the whole world through his children. You get it? That makes sense? Do you understand that? The whole goal was to get rid of Israel and Israelites, the true Israelites. And they did it through slavery by making us forget who we were. Beating it out of us. What else, honey? Bug breaking. Um, yeah. Raping our women, our children, the men. Trying to genocide us through sexual genocide. Sexual genocide, yeah. all kinds of things. Putting okay. us in their wars to fight their wars, to take over terror, promising us we'll we'll let you, if you fight for for in the war, you have you you'll get land and, and free. But once we help them win the war, they put us back in slavery and didn't give us nothing. 
And then they became imposters, honey. Can you turn to Revelation 3 and 9? Because mm -hmm. then they put fake Jews over in our land in the 1940s after World War II. I'm, I'm, I'm just letting you know how desperate Esau is to get rid of, get rid of um, Israel. Mm -hmm. It's right here. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. Get that, my people. The whole goal of the beast was to make us forget the, who we were, which is Hebrew Israelites, the chosen people of God. You get it? Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. I don't know about the... the, the That's the why they made the you forget your language, where you came from. Who you are, that's why they lied and told you you were African. And that's why they, they, they supplanted themselves in our land. So when you so as the, the years went by, you was like, Oh, they the real Jews because they already occupied that Esau, land. Gentile. That's gonna take us to Revelation three and nine. What does God say about who over in Israel right now? To the church in Philadelphia, verse nine. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. There you go. What he's saying is, who over in Israel right now is nothing but the synagogue of Satan, that's Esau, that's Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And when it's all said and done, I'm gonna make them come bow at your feet and let you know they got my people in captivity. They got my people enslaved and in Jim Crow and being shot by the police while they over on my shit. Mm-hmm. And when I come to deliver my people, they're going to doubt about at your feet because he called them what? Liars. Liars. They're not Israelites. And, we are. And if you know anything about the word, liars will not tarry in God's sight. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation. So, so not only did they make us forget who we are, and they did a good job. We coming for it. We coming for it because they did a real good job with y'all because y'all won't even let shalom come out your damn mouth. They did a real good job with that. So that Israel name is remember no more. And then we're going to put our people, Esau people, in Israel and have them posing as Jews. And Revelation said they're fake Jews and they're liars. And I'm going to put yeah. them out my land. Not only that, they won't even call themselves claim their ethnicity Hebrew. That's, that we coming for it, babe. It, it, it's really sad. And, it's and, I, and I don't know how this many, plan worked and in Psalm 83. I don't know how many times we have to say this in our lessons that we have done over the past year. If you do not accept your your ethnicity, which is Hebrew, if you do not accept yourself as being a Hebrew, and you continue to accept yourself in your heart as being African American or Black, you are just exiting yourself out of taking um, part in the wealth transfer and let me repeat that again god he's here to um check men's hearts he's searching the heart so you can you can't you can't fake it this time if you refuse to accept your ethnicity which is hebrew you're an israelite because israel is our land you will have no partaking of his wealth transfer because your heart loves Babylon, mm -hmm. your heart loves Esau, and your heart refuse to accept who you are. Our identity is everything, and they know that, and that's what we're about to go mm -hmm. down to, honey. You're right. Because let's talk about how desperate they are to keep us from our true identity, and it's worked like a charm. Psalms 80, 83 verse 4 worked like a charm for these nations. Come, they say, let us destroy them. You know, destroy means to completely destroy. Completely destroy, right. Them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. They know our history better than us, okay? Rome versus Zion. This is an ancient old battle. Rome took us down first in 70 AD, okay? They've always been our enemy. They were the ones that when Jesus was going to be born, Rome is the one that said, go kill all the two-year-olds. Because mm -hmm. they were trying to kill the future coming king. Mm-hmm. Same people, Rome versus Zion. Esau versus Jacob, always. They've mm -hmm. been winning for 500 years. We won before the end. They don't tell you that part. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, I'm going to talk, let's talk about, we this bring us to our next part, honey. You're very right, because this is what we want to talk about right here. Because this is how desperate Esau is. Man, you, let's go back. The plan of the other nations, now, man, you, Africa and Arabian nations, they were just pawns in this game. But mm -hmm. the real culprit was Esau. 
And the whole goal, because they couldn't genocide us, if they had a choice, they would have just killed us off. Mm -hmm. But because we're the most highest nation and we his very proof that he exists, they couldn't do that. They couldn't, do, they trying to genocide us now. It's not working, is it? It's not. Nope. So they couldn't do that. So they say, okay, let's enslave them. Let's make them subservient. Because by this time, God's glory had left us because we was cursed. Go back to part two of the code. Okay. And so they said, okay, well, we're just going to make them forget who they are, which has worked like a charm. And this is how desperate they are to prove. Now, they told us, they lied and told us we were a bunch of scattered tribes all over Africa. We were prisoners of war, and that's how we ended up in slavery, which is complete and utter, utter bullshit. Okay, we were a bunch of scattered tribes. Like I said, Africans weren't selling other Africans. Africans were selling Hebrews. We were on, Like I said, when we lost our land... In 70 AD, we migrated down into the west coast of Africa. We started building up Timbuktu. That's no different than your Chinatowns, mm -hmm. your Mexican, your little Mexico, your little Italy. That's what we did in Africa. Okay. They came and got us because the Africans sold us out, including the Moors. They headed up the charge for you so-called self-proclaimed Moors. That's a joke. Yeah. Okay. You have an identity crisis. Get help. Listen. Okay. They're so desperate to keep us from our identity. They know our history even more so than we do. And they also know in the Bible that it's predicted that we're supposed to, um, that, that God's going to send help to get his people. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Esau versus Jacob. So now we're in captivity, we're in slavery. Back in the late 1960s, some Hebrews were starting to wake up, reading their Bible like, wait a minute, I think this is us. Esau came and infiltrated that, and that's, thus your Hebrew caps were born. Mm -hmm. That's these brothers out there. Well, I won't even call them brothers. I was calling them devils. Devils. But, you know, you got some young ones that was ensnared by, the, by, by that. But as a whole, them the ones out there shouting on the street, street corners, and they're the ones. Let me tell you something. These Hebrew camps are funded by Esau. Yeah. They have built major chapels and um, they have built major chapels and Charters. organizations yeah. all over the nation. It's a multi-million dollar industry over 40 years. I wouldn't even call it name, over, over the country of, of, of America, daughter, uh, daughter of Babylon. Mm -hmm. They have built... Now, mind you, they shut Marcus Garvey organization down when him building child. They shut him down within five to seven years. The Black Panthers, they shut them down in less than a decade. Mm -hmm. The Civil Rights Movement, they shut them down in less than a decade. Black Lives Matter, they shut them down in less than five years. But the Hebrew camps, they let these motherfuckers thrive for 40 years. Why do you think that is? I'm going to tell you why. Because Esau knew that at some point we were supposed to awaken and know who we truly are. And these Hebrew camps, half of them not even, they don't even believe in, some of them don't even believe in God, the, 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 um, the, the actual leaders of it. They actually are Masons, 32nd mm -hmm. and 33 degree Masons. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what I know. Look it up for yourself. I'm not going to do everything here. Look it up for yourself. And they are out here. Spreading this poison, they have turned our ethnicity into an occult, an occultic religion. A religion, yeah. And Esau funded them to do that. So that as we woke up, we'll fall into the snare of the Hebrew camps and be put under a sleep anesthesia again through lies. Again. Which there also is, is actually, it wouldn't even uh, uh, put us asleep. Now, if we fail for the Hebrew camps, now we're just being blasphemous against our creator and we dedicate our lives to this falsehood of um, Hebrew Israelites being a religion. This is a deception, turning our ethnicity into a cult. Religion. In, into a religion. And Esau funded this movement. The Hebrew camps are funded by Esau. When have they ever let us build anything that powerful? Never. The Hebrew camps have camps in every single state across all cities worth millions of dollars. Let me say that again. 
the Hebrew camps have several, they have chapters and temples in all states over all major cities worth millions of dollars. For 40 years, Black Wall Street was only 15 years old. Black Panther, Civil Rights Movement, Marcus Garvey, only five or seven years. But they let these devils build nationwide chapels over all over the country for 40 years. Do you know why? So that they could be out on the street corner yelling at white people. Go watch the videos. And we'd be seen as a bunch of Hebrew Israelites who'd be seen as crazies. Yeah. So when the real ones came, everyone is automatically like, I don't want to be a part of that. And that's exactly what a lot of you did when we first hit the scene. You identified us because of the name of our organization as we one of these camps. And you didn't want to be associated with it. The camps are Hebrews, but they're Hebrew coons. They're coons. And they treasonous have been traitors. They treasonous traitors. And they have been bought by the government. And they are deliberately put out here. To make us seem like a radical, crazy ass religion. No other ethnicity is seen as a fucking religion but Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> Tell me why that is when we are fucking ethnicity. Are we not an ethnicity? Yes. We have Hebrew blood running through our veins, but when you think of Hebrew Israelite, what do you think of, honey? Those fools on the street corners, the camps, and. and and all the things they did, especially after we hit the scene, now you find out they be murdering their, their congregation, they be raping their women, beating their women. God know what else they done did. Hebrew, I mean, I'm sorry, Esau, funding those camps. They will never let anything grow that big. Esau. If they don't control it. If they don't control it. And they let them brothers be out on the street shouting at white people. Okay, you know they don't let nobody and, shot and they put people. And they put the truth in your face. J. Edgar Hooper said this, sir. If there's going to be a black Messiah, we're going to create them. And that's what they and did. And that's what they did. With the Hebrew, with the Hebrew camps. Israelite camps. And y'all fell for a hook, line, and sinker. It is not a religion. It is not some occultic um, shouting out on the street corner. It is our ethnicity. And I'm still looking for the, the part in, in, in his history. I'm talking about J. Edgar Hooper. When he said, if, 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 if there's going to be a, a spicy chicken sandwich, we're going to create it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just had to put that joke The government <laughs> funds those Hebrew camps. That's why you see these brothers out here shouting in the street. And that's why when you hear Hebrew Israelite, you think it's an occultic, radical, crazy movement. When Hebrew started waking up in the 1960s, Esau immediately infiltrated mm -hmm. and said, we'll pay you the money to do this. And that's why they're allowed to be out. Now, they didn't let Marcus Garvey do it. They didn't let the Black Panthers do it. They didn't let the Civil Rights do it. They did not let um, any of our other movements do it. But they let the Hebrew Israelites have chapels in every state across all cities and be out on the street corner shouting at Esau people. In, in their little um, wardrobe. That, little, that little damn costume. Costume. And that was to want because they know our history better than I, we do. They knew that at some point we were supposed to wake up. And when we woke up, they wanted us to shun away from it because those people are crazy. Right. That's a religion. Mm-hmm. Y'all fell for that bullshit. God damn it. Okay. Let me get my cheat because I'm, I'm so upset because that, that's so stupid. No other ethnicity is seen as a religion. Y'all fall for Esau tricks again. Bam, I'm sorry. But th does that make sense to you? Do you understand why I'm upset? Yeah, you don't have to ask me. I'm, I'm a master <sighs> at this stuff. Jesus. Okay? That's what that is. That's your Hebrew camps. Okay? And I know some young brothers have gotten entrapped into that because they recruit, you yeah, know. Yeah, they recruit heavy. Okay? But that's wrong. And, you know, we have some false, we have some Pharisee spirit, false keeping, law um, keeping teachers out here. They The only thing they don't believe in is the polygamy, but the ideology of the camps is still the same. Mm -hmm. That's why y'all been out here sounding like idiots. Yeshua Hamashika, and, and, and you must call him that, and all the that Rama bullshit. Died, the Rama died, Right. We, 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 I understand his name is Yeshua in Hebrew, but his name is also Jesus in English, just like it's a Sioux in Japanese, boo. You know what I'm saying? His name is Yeshua in Hebrew, but it's not it's not that in in, in um, Chinese. It means something else. 
So that's what Esau is the author of that foolishness. Of confusion and yes. lies, deception. We are Hebrew Israelites because Israel, I just explained to you, we lost our land in 70 AD, is where we come from. Hebrew is our bloodline, that's our ethnicity. And Esau has funded these camps and they're out here shouting on the street corner. And it is not a religion. It is our bloodline. What other ethnicity do you know seen as a religion? None. Even the Arabs, you know that they are heavily Muslim. Muslim. But do you see them as Muslim or, or, or as Arabs? Arabs. Arabs. Okay. Arabs. Ar yeah. Okay. Ishmaelites. That's what the Bible calls them. Mm -hmm. But with us, it's a religion. Mm -hmm. We have some nuts say the Hebrew faith. What the hell is that? In Hebrew ain't no faith if you're it's ethnicity. ethnicity. Jesus Christ. So Y'all stop falling for this. Okay. Listen up. Okay, we're gonna move on to our next point here. You get it? You think they get it? At this at this point, <laughs> it's it, like we it's, gotta tell you at everything. This point, Jesus, it's we love like, you. Ugh. When you're trying to tell like I said, I don't like repeating myself in the first place, but when you're not dealing you're not with we're not dealing with children in grammar school. These are people in their mid thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, I mean, listen. Damn. Okay, but well, we love you. Now, moving forward, we know that the Hebrew camps were set up by Esau, and they were able to thrive and prosper, and they were millions of dollars. So Esau funded it so that we would run from who we are. You gotta understand. You all may be scared, but Esau's scared because he they they knew it was predicted. Go back to our previous videos that eventually we would be delivered from these devils. Right. Okay? And then they would get their double portion of, of what they recompense got coming. coming back to them. Yeah, they finna get that work. Okay. So, now we are a nation. We begin into awakening. The awakening, we begin to realize, you know, I think we Hebrews. Nobody fit the Romans 28 but us. Okay. That's gonna take us to Joel chapter 3. Verses 1 through 7. I'm going to break this down real easy for you guys. Give me a minute to find it here, honey. I lost it here in my Bible. But um, I guess you can tell it. Here you go. Okay. So that's going to take us to Joel chapter 3, okay. verses 1 through 7. Okay. Joel chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Under the heading, The Nations Judged. In those days, and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jesuphite. There, I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people, Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. Okay. Let me do a little background here. This is Job. Now, we just went over how what Esau did and how the nations conspired, but he's mainly mo the most upset with Esau because they're the actual ones that had us in captivity. The Arabs did have a son, but they weren't as evil as Esau, and the Africans helped them do that. So we went over all of that. Now, this is in Joel. He's talking about now. He's talking about the second exodus. And he says, in those days and at that time, as I'm restoring their fortunes, we're going to get our gold back. Mm -hmm. That's what me and you are here for. We're here to, to collect our gold. I'm going to gather the nations. He's talking about Esau. And I'm going to bring them down to the Valley of Jephthah because they sold my people. Okay? And desecrated my inheritance, which means they made them forget who, my, who they were. They made them forget they were even Israelites. And because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. Remember we just went over in Revelation 12, 3? He said, the liars are in my land. See, that's the most has land. He mad about that, babe. Mm -hmm. He pissed right now. Okay? And so, that's what that means. Keep reading, honey. Chapter, I mean, verse 3. Verse 3 continues. They cast lots for my people and traded boys for prostitutes. They sold girls for wine to drink. He basically saying, you sold my people for your ill-gotten gains. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going, honey. Now, what have you against me, Tyree and Sidon and all you regions of Philistia? Are you repaying me for something I have done? If you are paying me back, I will swiftly and speedily return on your own heads what you have done. 
let's start right there. Start right there, babe. We're going to be here just a minute. Now, what have you against me, Tyr, and Sedan, and all you regions of Philistia? Those are all European nations. Are you repaying me? This is the most I'm talking. For something I have done. If you pay me back, I'm going to swiftly turn and speedily return on your own heads what you have done. Notice in this scripture, he's not talking to the African nations. Mm -hmm. He's not talking to the Arabian nations. Because as I said, go back to lesson 10. Just get over it. The European nations love to say everybody has slavery. The, 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 the Arabs have slavery in, in lesson 10. As I said, the, then I'll say now, nobody has slavery like you. See, most slavery systems were set up where you did your time and you were let go. Mm -hmm. You weren't slavery for life and they didn't break up old families. families, whole families. Even in Egypt, they didn't do that. Yeah, plenty of people had slavery. Nobody has slavery like you. And so obviously he not as pissed with Africa and the Arabians like he is with Esau because nobody has slavery like you. Nobody told you to do all that extra evil shit. That's why he coming for you. You get it? Yeah, you don't have to keep asking me. Ask them to do they get it. <laughs> they get it. That's what I mean when I ask you, honey. Okay, keep going. For you took my silver and my gold and carried off my finest treasures to your temples. We went over that. Solomon's gold, part one. He, he, they took our silver and gold. Rome took us down 70 AD. Keep going. You sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks. Esau. That you might send them far from their homeland. And he talking to the European nation. I don't see no other nations here. Philistia, Tyr is none but the European nation. Sudan. That's who he's talking to. Esau. Okay. Let's not get that twisted. He's talking to Esau. This judgment is for Esau. Okay. Verse 7 continues. See, I am going to rouse them out of the places to which you sold them. And I will return on your own heads what you have done. There you go. I'm going to rouse them up from the places you sold them. We scattered into four, all four corners of, of Trinidad, South America, the Brazilian, the Negro race there, you know, um, North America, us, the UK, Canada, um, you know, the Caribbean islands, okay, Virgin Islands. I'm going to rouse them. I'm going to wake them from where you sold them, okay? And that's where you get, we Hebrews. I think mm -hmm. we Hebrews. We Hebrews, Okay. Verse 8, honey. Verse 8 continues. I will sell your sons and daughters to the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, a nation far away. The Lord has spoken. There you go. And just for you, these Hebrew Israelite camps also put out that we're going to have Esau into slavery. We don't want nothing to do with slavery. No, nope, we don't. You know, he said he made this very clear. I don't see how you can misinterpret the scripture. When this all go down, because he's about to kick Esau's ass through these plagues and judgment, through the servant of the Lord that he raised up to get this done, okay? And when this all go down, we're going to sell them to, like, the Chinese, the mm -hmm. Arabians, and all of that. They're going to be working in those sweatshops and all of that. Mm -hmm. We're going to make money off of them, but we're not going to have them in our nation as slaves. No. No one wants to be bothered with Esau. We no. want to be free from we Esau. We want to be free from him. Okay, that's pretty clear as day. He said Judah is going to sell them to the Sabaeans. That's your Chinese and, you know... Okay. And I wonder how much one of them costs. Two. I don't care. I'm, Me neither. Y'all take them. Whatever. Yeah. But it won't be free. We're going to make a coin off you. <laughs> exactly. So, it is time. So, that's why we're going. Now, we're going to go. Do you guys get that? You get it? Okay. So, we get, we're get. we going to go to Isaiah. And I'm going to break this down really quick. And we're almost done with our scriptures here. But you all need to understand what's going on. You understand? Remember, the, late, the, 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 the title of this message is The Code, Part 3. We, 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 we getting there. Stay with me, my people. Stay with me. Where we at, babe? We at 53 minutes. Ooh, okay, this is probably going to be a little longer one. Y'all pause and come back. Learn with us. Okay, let's get it done. Okay, so Isaiah chapter 52, verses 1 through 7. I'm probably going to stop you after the first one. I'm going to do a little background, honey. I'm going to break this down real simple for you, my people. All okay? right. Isaiah chapter 52, verses 1 through 6, under the heading, The Cup of the Lord's Wrath. Mm -hmm. I love this type of shit. <laughs> okay. Awake. Awake, Zion. Clothe yourself with strength. 
Put on your garments of splendor, Jerusalem, the holy city, the uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Okay, let me do a little background here. I'm going to let you finish. What the Lord is saying, he's talking about our second exodus today, 2019. 2018, we came on the scene around this time. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, awake Zion, clothe yourself with strength. He's saying, I'm here to get you. Mm -hmm. I'm here to get you. They plotted back in Psalms 83 to get my people into, um, you know, desecrate Israel till we didn't even remember who we were. He said, and I allowed that because you were under a curse. I went over there in several videos. He said, but now I'm here to get my kids. Okay. I raised up a prophet. I am here to get my kids. Like I said, he's not coming down here himself. He is down here to get his kids. Okay. No different than the first exodus with Moses, now the servant of the Lord, he is here to get his kids. Go, what he tells, go, go get my kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what this is about. And so he's saying, awake, clothe yourself with strength. Because he know you're weak and he know you're scared. Because mm -hmm. you've been your asses kicked for 500 years. You've been cursed. You've had no victories. Okay, everything we touch has failed, especially against Esau. Okay, so what does verse 2 say? I'm going to prove to you he's talking directly to us. 2019. Verse 2, shake off your dust, rise up, sit in throne, Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck. Daughter Zion, now a captive. There we go. Daughter Zion, mm -hmm. now a captive. Who's in captivity? His daughter. Hebrew people, daughter, daughter Zion. Zion. We're daughter Zion. I want you to keep that because we daughter Zion. You need to understand we're a baby right now. We are the descendants of virgin Israel. We're daughter Zion. Free yourself from the chains of your neck. He's telling you, don't be scared. I'm here to get you, daughter Zion. You now in captivity, but I'm here to get you. You don't have to um, promote chicken because you scared. <laughs> you got the, you got prophets on the scene walking amongst you now. Don't be. You don't have to be scared of Esau talking about. Oh, this chicken this is the best chicken I have. Oh, Sam Bowen and shit. <laughs> that shit ooh, Man, you got me crazy. I, I know I had to say that. <laughs> when I ooh ooh, you, you just don't know. All y'all are, all a lot of you guys are doing, if you don't really understand, when you do stuff like that, mm -mm. and you willingly go out of the will of what God, the Father, the Creator, Source Creator is trying to do at this time in the world mm -hmm. and for His people, all you do is tell, you tell Him, kill me. That's mm -hmm. all you, you're raising your hand to get shot. To, part of the two thirds. The part of the two thirds. You're okay. saying, I'm, I'm a part of the two thirds. I don't care. I want to be a part of the two thirds. I don't want to go. And you know what? You know what the creator, the most high Yah is saying? Be as you may, have as you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when your day come, do not do not cry for these people. When they when these plagues hit, stop that butt dancing. Okay. 52 and 3, honey. And what else he say? So he says, shake off your dust, rise up, sit in throne. He's telling you sit in throne. And not be scared. They scared to even say shalom. They even scared to admit who they are. Yeah. And then free yourself from the chains in your neck, you know. And then daughter Zion, which is us, you're now, now captive. a captive. Even in your land of captivity. Okay, what is he saying in verse three? Honey? Verse three read. continues. For this is what the Lord says: You were sold for nothing, mm -hmm. and without money you will be redeemed. Mm. For this is what the Southern Lord says. This is what he's saying about our second exodus right now. At first, my people went down to Egypt to live. Lately, Assyria has oppressed them. And Assyria is, uh, is, is the biblical word for German, Germany and the Windsor family in Britain. I told you Britain run this shit, not America. Mm -hmm. They are German. They're so German. So that's what he's yeah. talking about when he says Assyria got them. He's talking about German because German is actually the very heartbeat and the strength of the European nation. Great Mother Britain never set her ass down. Mm -hmm. So the, all these idiots out here talking about some reparations from America, that mm -hmm. ain't that, Just stop talking. And if, for those of you new to the channel or don't understand when we say um, Great Mother Britain, we're talking about the we mentioned the House of Windsor. That's Queen Elizabeth. That's Prince Charles. Mm -hmm. um, that was them devils, devils over there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I call them snakes because they 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 reptilians. So, but that's neither here nor there. That's a, that's something that y'all should have been on your research. I have stuff on my on, on my playlist that you, if you really wanted to know what that's about, you it's there. But okay, we're gonna continue. Verse five continues. And now, what do I have here? 
What do we have here now? Okay. <laughs> Declares the Lord. For my people have been taken away for nothing. And those who rule them mock declares the Lord. Yeah, they make fun of us. They yeah. make fun of us because we are spiritual people as a group. What are mm -hmm. you so spiritual for? What are you, you, you in slavery, you in Jim Crow, you getting shot by the police and they mock us and people laugh at us for even believing in him. Fried and, chicken, water meat, melon eating. Mm-hmm. And yet, Negroes. minstrel shows, minstrel shows and just all kind of buffoonery. Okay, and what else, honey? And all day long, my name is constantly Blasphemy. Yeah, that, that's what that's what he mean. My people serve me and they known for being a spiritual group of people and people laugh at us and say, What y'all so spiritual for? Y'all 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 the scum of the earth. Mm -hmm. And 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 he's tired of his name being blasphemy, white Jesus and all that bull crap. First of all, get over it. Jesus is not white. End of story. Moving on. Right. And and then you want to blame him for everything Esau's doing when your ancestors caused Esau to be able to be in power right now. Right. And he's tired of his name being blasphemed. That's what that means. Okay, go ahead, honey. I'm tired of my name being blasphemed. That's right. Verse 6 continue. Therefore, my people will know my name. Therefore, in that day, they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. It is I who foretold it. He said, you didn't see the second exit is coming. You didn't know it was coming. But when I raised up my prophet to reveal that to you, now you know. And you can't say nobody did it but me. Go back to lesson 12, part 2, when we go over to the servant of the Lord. Okay? Yes, that's what that means. Okay? You think they get it, babe? No, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, we, we so far in. We're a year in. Mm -hmm. The one I feel like this, the remnant has already been cast. The, the 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 door is is so far is so close to being closed. That they gonna have to. You said you said you said the other day. You said if, if you could put it in layman's term, they got about twenty minutes. They got about they they got you down to your last fifteen minutes to get in this goddamn arc. Final call. Mm -hmm. Final call. So you know how they say fifteen minutes of fame. You yeah, yeah we're down to the last fifteen minutes for that fucking door closed forever. It's no such thing as the Hebrew fed and a self-proclaimed Israel and self-identified Hebrew Israelite. We are, we, Jesus, they, you know, you got to be a special group of people. Willie Lynch and Slave Man, and we're about to get on there for us to convince you that you actually have an identity. That you actually have wealth. Jesus. You actually have your own land that's vast. And you actually are people. We're people. We're a nation of people. We're not a bunch of scattered tribes that's only connected through slavery. Silly. Jesus. Okay, so we're going to keep But Esau, Esau tell you that Coonan pays well, and that's what you do. And that's why this fake ADOS movement is so dangerous because our identity is everything. Yeah, identity is and everything with anybody, any people, any group of people. If you identify yourselves as ex-slaves, anytime, it, it's no different than, this is what the Lord gave me, it's no different than a, a, someone, a couple. You know, I actually had an uncle like this. He actually passed away. But it's no different than a, a couple that came together through adultery. That means one or both of them were married. My uncle was married, and I love him to death. He's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I won't say his name, but my uncle was married, and he met a woman, and he started having an affair. And he eventually left his wife, and they got married. You know, to the to, he got married to the new woman. Now, him and his new woman was married for 30 years. But they were miserable. Mm -hmm. Because the way that they connected was on a negative note. He was already married. Mm -hmm. So that's how it is. You can never have something positive come out of, out of a negative connection. Mm -hmm. If you only connecting yourself as ex-slaves, what is that going to do? It's going to have you um, in poverty, in chains, dead, beat. Exactly. So if you say we come together as the Hebrew nation, as the chosen people of God, as Israel, that's power. Okay? Understand that and never forget but the, it. But the only power they seem to understand is the uh, TV show and stars that uh, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson produces and, and, exec and, you know, and, and produces and stuff. That's the only power they know and want to understand, which is the drug dealing culture, the murdering each other culture, constant chaos culture. Well, some of that was kind of put on us by No, I, un I understand. Like, I, I understand. Like I understand that. But you got to understand Esau is very cunning. They they, 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 they they shaped our, by the Willie Lynch, they were able to program our direction 
and how they wanted us to treat each other. Right. And that's what I'm getting to. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. And that's going to bring us to our next point. We, we, we almost getting to the end here. When it says, you know, we, we are daughter Zion, you know, just like we just talked about in Isaiah 52, we're the baby. We are the descendants of the very first Israel. I've gone over that in Virgin Israel. I've gone over that in several videos. They're the reason we're in this mess right now. We had to go in this beast for 500 years. They turned against God. And most the most biggest offense, not only were they killing all his prophets, they killed his son. They turned his son, Jesus, in to be killed. Okay. This is what I need you to understand. Get this, my people. Okay. I want you to catch this. Other nations have been nations forever. You heard that? One more time. Other nations have been nations forever. They never ceased to be in a nation. Right. They weren't made to forget their language and their culture and where they came from. That only happened to us. Daughter Zion, we're a baby nation. That's why you can't even say shalom. That's why you can't even admit you're a Hebrew because you didn't even know you were. Right? Right. Other nations have been other nations. They have been nations forever. We have, and that's why they have a code. Every nation has a code, including us. And the reason why your ass is off code, because most of y'all didn't even know we were a nation. Mm -hmm. They run around just in this sleigh and I was like, oh, Jesus, Lord, I'm gonna, I gotta need to take a drink of lemonade. <laughs> well, like I said, they they were saying all that, whooping, had the chest out, thinking they owned something, and it, it, it resulted in just a study. And Mitch McConnell told y'all, "Fuck y'all, <laughs> fuck y'all with a wooden dick," and which, mean, they, which means gonna make your ass bleed. <laughs> Stop, Daria. I'm just saying. Stop. And then, but, but, you okay. wanna, now they want to be little whores. <laughs> Let Mitch McConnell keep fucking you with a wooden dick with no Vaseline. Stop. You're bleeding all in your ass. Oh, babe, that's too much. But okay. smelling like a fucking coon out your fucking mouth. And well, they can, came and gave um, gays reparations in their they, face. And they, they, they came and, and had the audacity to piss on y'all and give reparations to the fucking LGBT. I'm a, I, I was just, I, I was going to say something else. Right, don't say that. But I'm not going to say that. But I'm going to say that the, the alphabet, the other alphabet boys. There's a lot of <laughs> alphabet boys out there, you know. And, 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 and well, they should have did what we told them. Exactly. We said, back to Israel, our goal, second exodus. They want to they wanna go their own way. Okay, you're not going to stop this second exodus regardless. Okay, you might as well get, in, get, on, get on cold or get left. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna talk about, honey. You done? Cause you went a little too far, but I guess we'll keep that in the video. It's my wood. No, I, I, I'm and all keeping that. that in the video because, like I said, <laughs> they, nah, they talking about some fucking chicken, and I'm walking <laughs> the earth right now. God damn. Now that's now I'm going I'm going back into my sheet right now. I can do it now. I can, I can do it in a snap right now. I can go in and out of anger and peaceful, just like that. Yeah. So you don't want don't make the snap go off. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, we keeping that in. I'm not editing that shit. Nah, <laughs> that's classic. I want that to... When we get back to Israel, I want that to be on, 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 on the, the museum, head, the head. You know what I'm saying? I want that to be... I want I want some of the ones that fell, that we, we collected their fucking heads. I want that to be on a plaque saying, this represents the ones who didn't follow and listen when they were supposed to and was willing to get fucked by Esau with a wooden dick. With no oh. Vaseline, ass bleeding, but look, they smelling eating a, a piece of spicy Popeye's chicken. And I, I you know, I'm mad at so much as, as eating chicken. That's fine, but if you can make that go viral, why didn't you make the second exit? Why didn't you make Solomon Gold video go viral? Yeah. Why didn't you make the second exit go viral? Why didn't you make a lot of um shit that we're doing go viral? Right. Share something. That would have. That would have. We would have been done. Brought down a lot of their nations and, and shit by now. It's gonna pop off regardless. They just assuring they're not going. You're to just assuring that you're a part of the two thirds. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So that's what I'm talking about when I say, "Honey, you done?" Yes, I'm done. <laughs> I'm back in my cheek. Does that snap? So, Shalom. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. Daughter Zion is a baby because we didn't know we were a nation. And now we're a nation. And other nations have been nations forever. 
they understand about having a cold, end up holding a cold and keeping a cold. All nations have the same cold. Mm -hmm. And that's to put each other first, always. Okay? And don't let anybody come between that cold. So, I want to give an example of, of this right here. We got, um, I want to use an example of George Perez, a Latino man. He's a Latino billionaire, by the way. And what had happened with George um, Perez? Shout out to him. And George could be either Jorge as well. It's spelled J O R G E. Okay, I'm, I may be pretty okay, but, but so I say, Mr. Perez, this is very simple for other nations, you know. George Perez is a billionaire. He's a Latino billionaire, and he had built plenty of Trump towers. He's very mm -hmm. successful over here, and Trump came to him and asked him to head the project on building the wall mm -hmm. over Mexico. You know what he told George? I mean, you know what he told Trump, Donald Trump? He basically told him, kick, and rock, kick rocks. I'm not doing that. Now, why would he do that? Because he Latino first. He even said in one of his comments, he said, well, what side of the wall I'm supposed to be on? Right. Okay. This is very simple for other nations. George Perez is a billionaire. What other nations know you, baby daughter Zion, which you don't know, that's why you need to start listening. We are a nation. We have a code. George Perez know that he's a billionaire. The president contacted him and said, build this wall against your people. He told Donald Trump, kick rocks. I ain't doing that shit. Because you know what? George Perez been a part of the Latino community his whole life. Like I said, every nation been nations forever. And they know as a nation, Asians, Latinos, Arabians, every other nation, Indians, every other nation knows that no one is above or beneath the code. Of their I'm, nation. I'm going to say that one more time. I need you to get it. No one is above or beneath the code. Can I say it just three times? Because I need yeah, to go ahead. No one. That means whether you, like I say, down in the hood, all the way up through Hollywood Hills, everybody in between. The other nations been nations long enough to know a code. We have a code as a Hebrew nation. Daughter Zion, listen to me. But like a George Perez, Perez a billionaire, he knows no one is above or beneath the code. From down in the hood all the way up to a billionaire, no one is above the code. He told Donald Trump, I'm not doing that. You get it? Do they get it? I get it. You understand that? No one is above or beneath the code. Meaning beneath, I don't care how down, I don't care Shaquita shaking. It don't matter. I don't care I don't if you're sleeping you... in your car. I don't care if you're sleeping on the street corner right now. I don't care if you work. $5 billion. No one is above the code. No one is beneath the code. Every other nation get that. It's very simple. Yeah. But because you're a baby, we let me tell you something. Get this shit. No one is beneath or above the code. We need to learn what other nations know. And it's not about following examples. It's the universal law of the code. Yeah. <sighs> that brings me to Jay-Z. Sean Carter. <laughs> Has been in the news. Okay. That brings me to Jay Z. Sean Carter. Sean <laughs> Carter. Mr. Rock Nation. Mr. Hover. <laughs> Mr. God himself. Mm -mm -mm. Self proclaimed Hover. Mm. He's the author and Omega. He the, wait, the Alpha and Omega, according to him. Alpha, yeah. The <laughs> Alpha and Omega. He's the Alpha dog. Like, like Alpha God is the Alpha and yeah, Omega. The God Alpha is the and Alpha Omega. Male. So you He's the, the top Alpha of the male. pyramid for all Man, our now. people. Oh my God. Could we have a better representative to speak for all our people? <laughs> okay, let's go. Yeah, George Perez, he needs to sit down with talking about, talking about, We talking about Jay Z the rapper? Jay-Z, the lead he put me, the rapper? <laughs> well, now he's a social activist, I guess. Oh, oh he's, a, he's in socialism. He's a social activist now? The, the rapper, though. The rapper. Wait, 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 w
That's what I was talking about. We 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 gonna bring it. Yeah, back I'm, I'm just making sure we talking about Jigga, my nigga. We talking about that? that yeah. John, that's Sean Carter. House okay. nigga. Okay. Phil nigga. House nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The one that was I think, down, I, think yeah. I heard a couple of his tunes. Yeah. I yeah. I was I was I was a fan. I like Nas better. Mm. Anyway. I was a fan. Okay. So that brings me to Jay Z when I said no one is above or beneath the cold, and that's what you you all are, baby nation. We're a baby nation. Y'all better grow up real fucking quick. It's the not rapper? a game. It's not a game. Scratch my head, a rapper. Okay. okay. So that bring, like I said, that brings me to Jay Z. We're gonna talk about that. Okay, we're gonna talk about trans. We ain't been on in a month. We need to address this issue. Now, first, I want to tell you. The situation about Jay-Z, before I go into that, because my husband's going to tell you something. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. My husband's a prophet. I say this, and I have to say that, and I'm a prophetess. I have to say that so you understand our position and why we talk the way we do throughout the video. If I say, God showed me something, or I saw this, you understand. I said, I'm a prophetess, right? Right? So yeah. you understand that. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, when you see me, just call me Aisha. I'm not looking for all that. This is... Call me D. <laughs> But Mr. D. <laughs> but um I want you to know first of all that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. When the Most High Yah shows us dreams or visions about individuals, it's because it has something to do with the nation and the yeah. mission that we're called on, which is the second exodus. He's not gonna show us anything about your personal business. He's not going to show us anything about your personal life. We get some people that call us. They want us to give, like, we psychics. No, 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 we're not psychics. Right. He's not going to give us things about your personal business. He's a gentleman. That's not our business to know that. Mm -hmm. The only reason he give us a dream is it's going to either help or harm the movement right now, which is the second exodus. That's why he gives us this so we'll be in the know. He's not going to leave us blinded to anything when you call to lead something this epic. Right? Exactly. So, that's what I want to say first, a disclaimer. On the second note, I need you, my husband had a dream about Jay-Z about two and a half weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. About three weeks ago. And then when this, this particular thing happened with the NFL, that's when it began to have sense, make sense. But what was so funny about it, you had a dream about him. I had a dream about him about three, mm -hmm. four days later. And I think I had another dream about it. I'm like, what the heck is Jay-Z doing in my dream? Then when this came out about the NFL, I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Now we understood why. But we was we had this three. Three weeks three, prior before it even happened. Before it even happened. But the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And we weren't going to get online and call somebody out. Right. And until, we, until it play out. Exactly. And even my dream, my husband's going to tell his dream. But I'm not going to tell mine because that's even more personal. That's something I tell Mr. Carter. To his face. You, to his That's face. something you don't tell. Right. You don't get, and again, that goes back to the most high as a gentleman. Mm -hmm. We are not here to air people's dirty laundry out for the public. Right. I will call someone personally if it's something to a point they really need to hear it. Right. And it, it's usually going to have something to do with the nation. With the nation. It not has personal. nothing to do with personal one-on-one -on -one problem with it me. It has everything me. to do with back to Israel. Our goal. That's it. Okay. He ain't showing us anything else because this is what we born to do. I'm not here to talk to rappers. Okay, so go ahead, honey, and tell your dream. Okay, this is this is my dream, y'all. So, and this, this y'all can read. Three weeks ago, y'all. I'll tell the okay, interpretation. but y'all can y'all can read into it what you want. But I'm just telling you how it happened. Okay, so I'm meeting Jay Z, I guess, to meet uh, about um, our nation. Mm -hmm. So I, I come to the meeting. And it's him with, a, I, I feel a presence. I don't see their face, but I feel a presence of three other men with him. So as soon as I come come in and sit down, it's, it's, it's like a dinner meeting. So as soon as I sit down, I see his food at, on, a plate on, with food on it. So I sit down. As soon as I sit down, Jay-Z and these three individuals um, get up and exit to a door to the right. So I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, where are they going? So I, I'm trying to follow them real quick. So I pop a couple pieces of meat in my mouth and rush to get behind it. They were moving real fast. As soon as I go out the same door they just left, I get ambushed, and then a black car pulls up, and here come Archangel Michael. He just started growing, growing bigger and expanding, and they start running with fear and terror, and then the dream stopped. Okay, and that's what I remember you telling me that, and like I said, I had a dream 
a couple of days later and it was kind of like a ping pong but saying all that to say sean carter was very heavy in our hearts and visions god had given me a word i'm like okay what's going on when this situation came out with the nfl that's when it all made sense especially the dream you just mm -hmm. made because what that represents is an act of treason yeah And you I need to take a break right here. And, I, need, I need to let me let me take and, 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 and you don't even want to know how what I told my wife when I told her about it. Do you want me to tell, say that part? No. Okay, I tell him. I tell him that in his face, probably. Was an act of treason. And once again, we didn't even know that this deal was going on. See. Let me hit my Bible right here. I'm not upset. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to calm down. What Sean Carter doesn't understand, this is not the time to betray your people. And the Lord gave you that dream and he gave me one. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of back and forth. Because the Lord takes your platform extremely serious, Sean Carter, Sean. He takes your platform extremely serious because you have millions of people that listen to you. And that's why anytime he would give prophets dreams about what you're up to, you've been, you've been making this deal for over a year, uh, about a year, but he giving us dreams. I'm like, what is Jay-Z doing in my dream? You were saying, what is Jay-Z doing in my dream? Anytime he giving the prophets dreams that's, that's called to lead this second exodus, and he's saying this person is involved in treason, that's bad, Jay-Z. That's a problem. Is yeah. that not a problem? That's a problem. You're trying to set up a prophet. Not just that. It's the wrong time to go against the nation. This is not the time to be treasonous. Okay? And God's trying to give you time. What well, trying to give you a minute because... A quick minute. A quick minute because... Listen, none of y'all don't want to show up in my dreams like that. Seriously. We not them type of prophets. If you showing up in our dreams, that's that's kind of bad. Is it not? When you're, you're dealing with the second exit. You're a target. Yeah. That's a problem. That means he pissed right now, Jay-Z. And you showed up in our dream before this even came out. Listen. The only way to redeem yourself from this, you need to back out that deal. If it, if it was even a real deal in the first place. Because Israel loves to, to, to create distraction illusions. This is the wrong time to betray Israel. And God is holding you accountable. Because you have too many people that listen to you. You might as well be a pastor. I'm just telling you. That's why you're in so much trouble. And we got this before he even did it. Yeah. We were like, what's this about? That's what, it, that's, that, that's what it's about. You understand? And so... Listen, even like a Chrisette Michelle, when she when she when she went to the Trump's inauguration and all that, she got what she deserved because she had time to back out that deal and she didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So she deserved for her career to be destroyed. Kudos to the nation for doing that. She deserved that because we they begged you not to go and you did it. We have got to enforce a code. No one is beneath or above the fucking code. This is very simple for other nations. You know, we got people on land actually questioning Jay-Z's motive. Clearly, this was an act of treason. Only slave man the people. Do you think I call you that to insult you? No. You were willing lynched. You, you brainwashed. This. You indoctrinated. Only, only someone willing lynch brainwashed and indoctrinated will even question whether or not he broke the fucking code. Of course he did. And it's this simple. If you're a billionaire as they say, as Esau say you are, what do you fucking need the NFL Roger Goodell for? He didn't. You betray your own people. For no damn reason. You didn't even need it. Okay. You didn't need it. You could have used it, but you didn't need it. It was unnecessary. You don't want to show up in prophet's dreams. Trust me, Jay-Z, that's bad. And what the Lord gave me when I told you, like I told you in previous videos, when I say that's what he gave me, I mean that's what he gave me. You need to back out this deal. You understand? That's the only way to redeem yourself. This is not the time to betray your nation. 
Okay, everybody, you want to know? I want to see what he going to do and what all that. That's Willie Lynch slave man behavior. Any other nation is very simple for other nations. George Perez did it. He was a billionaire. He told Trump to kick back. This will be any, very simple for any other nation. That's if he's a billionaire. Okay. Because billionaires can create their own shit. They don't have to suck. They don't have to latch on to Esau to get, to get anything done. You can dig in your own pockets. And work with your own people. Hand pick your own leaders. And we love you. I, my husband won't say it, but we do. This is not this is not me trying to sound cute. It's the truth. You need to get your ass on code. And the only way you're going to redeem yourself, we don't want to hear shit about you talking about we over kneeling and all that bullshit. The only thing you're going to do to redeem yourself is to back the fuck up out this deal. You know damn well you shouldn't have did it in the first place. You don't have to do it. But I tell you this. You showing up in my dreams, that's a problem. And you definitely showing up in mine's a, mo a motherfucking real, yeah, problem. That's a problem. You don't want that. That's like showing up in Elijah's dreams. You don't want that shit, okay? That means you didn't piss God off. And he's holding you accountable because you have so many of his people listening to you. And it's wrong. And I hit below the belt. So, I, I make it slow. So, that, and that's another thing I'm saying. And when I say God gave me something... This is what I mean. This is what he gave me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, calm me down. Please. So, you know, I am not from the beehive. You know, I love Beyonce's music, a lot of her music. I I've been listening to it since I was 18, 19, 19 years old. But 20, somewhere in there, I think about yeah. 20. <laughs> about 20. Um, She's a, you know, you, younger you, than me. You probably... probably Came on when, when y'all, all y'all girls. Bill, 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 But I'm not a part of the beehive. Yeah. You understand? It's not like I follow fan like that. And so, so when I say this is what the Lord gave me, this is what he gave me. This is not bias. Okay. I don't lie on the most high God. And this is what he gave me. You know, that, you know, Sean, your wife tried to warn you a little bit. She don't do that. Don't do it. She tried to tell you, I don't think this is a good idea. And you know, as a wife, I immediately sympathize with that. That's why God gave it to me first, because sometimes our husbands don't always listen. Especially when they have some sort of power and money. And money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the more money they have, the worse it can get. And sometimes it'll take them a while to realize, you know, I should probably utilize the help in Make my help, the help me that I have. I have. I don't know everything because it's your right to turn down her advice as the leader of the home. But like you said, take them a while to get some time. I it's mean, a yin and yang. The, you need the feminine and the male energy working together cohesively. You didn't listen. She tried to tell you. You didn't listen. And no wife of any substance is going to go against her husband in public, ever. Not if she have any ounce of substance to her. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, that's why we're not hearing anything. But right. this is what the Lord gave me. You should have listened because now you're showing up in the prophet's dreams, Jay-Z, and that's a problem. You understand? You need to back out this deal. We love you, though. But what you committed is a treasonous act, and this is not the time to do that against Israel. And I say this in love. You need to listen. No one is above the code. We love you, though. Okay? You need to think about your family, your wife and children. They need you here. It's not the time. Hell, and, even, and like I said, even even if, if 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 you think about it like this, too much of an influence. No, everything don't, and everything don't revolve around death as a sentence for treason. Um, I think, like I said, I have unique individual ways to break each one down. I believe <laughs> for a person of Sean Carter's ilk. He's been riding high for about 25 years. Bankrupt your ass, make your ass poor, and see how you and your family and your kids live surviving with no fucking money. Don't do that. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying you showing up in our dreams is not good. God showing us. That dream that you had showed that he was betraying the nation. Well, it showed me. If, you, if God seeing you like that, Sean Carter, that's a problem. Okay, you need to fear y'all more than you do, Roger Cadell. What the hell is his name? Whitey. <laughs> um, 
son. Don't don't forget back in 87, 88 when your ass was struggling. You you want to see struggle again, motherfucker? Keep on fucking with me. That's it. I'm back to my chief. Just like that. Shalom. Once again, we love you, though. We love you. You you in a different position because you had too many people listening to you. They listen. We got people. They act like God holding y'all accountable. Didn't I not tell these people? You might as well be pastors with churches that yeah. other people listen to. Y'all y'all taking that shit like God's not. You can't just have people listening to you and do this type of shit. Okay. You scatter them further. This is the wrong time. It's time for the second exodus to do that. What you did was wrong, and there's no excuse for it. No one is above he obviously the code. Be, he obviously won't be made famous. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next point. I'm not going to speak it, though. Because we did have some celebrities come out against what Jay-Z did, and that is a good thing, you guys. I'm very proud of you. Real men hold other men feet to the fire. No one above the fucking code. No one's beneath it. No one's above it. I don't from down in the hood all the way up through Hollywood Hills. No one is a beneath or be above the code. This is very simple for other nations. You daughter Zion, you baby Zion, get this. I know they lied and told you we were, we were just a bunch of ex-slaves from scattered tribes. We are a Hebrew Israelite nation. We going back to Israel. No one, we have a code like any other nation. You understand? And no one is above that. No one's beneath it. Neither is Jay-Z. And especially Eric Reed. You know, he's been such a, you know, he's very special to God's heart. A lot and we of people talk, don't and mention We're talking him. about the football player, Eric Reed, who uh, took the knee initially with Kaepernick. No one, no, he doesn't get as much airtime as Colin Kaepernick, but God remembers you. God yes. specifically told me to mention his name. You know, God's got specific blessings for him because he put his neck on the line, such a young man, for the nation. And and, and he even spoke out against this. Yes. And wow, you're just going to be so tremendously blessed as a result of that. And, and for for, for um, not not putting your, not standing for something and then backing out when it got hard. And, and you stayed 10 did. toes down with Colin. And you stayed 10 does. toes and you still do. And you came out against what Mr. Sean Carter did. And that and God says, that I, I love that. He, he loves that about you. And like I said, this dropped out of the blue in yeah. my spirit. You don't understand. Honey, do I follow celebrities? No. I love all my people, but I just, I don't have time. Hell, I don't even watch TV no more. Right. I don't, I have time. But I love my people. And when, so when God gives me, so it's not like I've been obsessed and then all of a sudden I'm going to jump on YouTube and say something. No. So when I know, when the Lord speaks to me, I, I just speak. But I, I love my people. Okay. So, we're going to move on to the next. We're getting ready to close. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So I, I need you to understand. We talked about that. I also like the fact that Charlemagne yeah, did Charlemagne. ask the question that the Hebrew nation was thinking. What about Colin Kaepernick? What you all need to understand, this NFL thing is not just about Colin Kaepernick. We appreciate what he's done. And we will never, um, you know, undermine that. Or minimize. Or minimize. There you yeah. go. Minimize that. But this is about our people being shot dead in the street. Okay, Colin Kaepernick knew that when he first kneeled. Yeah. Eric, Eric Reed knew that when he first kneeled. Yeah. Don't let Esau distract you, Tom. This is not about Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick knows it's not about him. It's about all our people who are being killed by Esau. And Colin Kaepernick understands what a lot of our um, Hebrew celebrities understand. Their money can't save a Esau cop from killing them or their children and getting off. When well, they did to Michael Bennett here, they yeah. said they blow his brains out. He didn't even do, all he did was sit, not stand for the national So anthem. think about this, and Tupac said it best. Having money means nothing if you still ain't free. I don't care how many millions our Hebrew celebrities acquire. Their money is not a fortified city like Esau chooses to use his money to make his own fortified city. And you all stay on code. Like I said, it's very simple. This is very simple for other nations. Y'all actually had a nerve to be questioning whether or not what, what Jay-Z did, whether it was good. good or, God damn it. Any other nation, this shit would be simple. Of course he committed a treasonous act. He aligned with some people that's attacking his people. And keeping his people from working. Damn. That's common sense. Speak to the code. 
But see, this is all a part. This brings me to my next point. When I call you Willie Lynch and Slave Man, I'm not saying that to insult you. You may be very smart individually, but as a group, we're dumbed down because yeah. we weren't. We didn't know we were a nation. Come, let us. Um, um, erase the name of Israel so that Israel is remembered no more. That's what they did to you. That's why every other nation can be on code and y'all fucking stupid as a nation. You can't even keep simple coded protocol. You, you got the nerve to be questioning whether or not what the fuck he did with treason. Of course it was. They get distracted from a new spicy chicken sandwich from Popeye's Chicken. That's, that that was putting you. And it's not your fault, but it's going to be your fault if you don't change it. CBT. This is the code part three, change your thought process. We a nation, we have a code. Anyone who's break that code, no one's beneath it, no one's above it. Anyone that breaks that code is a treasonous, period. It, it's no question, okay? Some can redeem themselves, some can't. Like Chrisette Michelle, like I said, she had every opportunity to back out their deal, she chose not to. Jay-Z needs to back out that deal. Well, he didn't already told us what's that he, he chose to stay on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, stay there. Yeah. So, Woody Lynch's slave-manded behavior produces symbols. A symbol is a Hebrew, okay, a black person who sells out his people to advantage themselves. Very advantage of themselves or advance themselves. Advance themselves. Mm -hmm. That's what a sambo is. A coon, they don't even need advancement. They're just buck. They're just coon and buck dance for nothing. For nothing. A yeah. sambo usually do it to make more money, or, right? Yeah, okay. uh, or a higher level of um, power. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to Boyce Watkins. Mm -hmm. Okay. What the, what the people call him, Moist Watkins? When I said no one is beneath. Or above the code. I want to show you this clip about Boyce Watkins because this is a classic example of what a Willie Lynch slave man to sample would think. This, what, this, okay. Can we, honey, can we play that clip? Because this is really sad. Yeah. I want to, and we, we, we're going to come back. And after these messages, we'll be right back. No, I don't pretend like I'm the authority on these things. And if you if you're mad because you feel like I dissed your hero or something like that, don't get mad. Just critically think. Just accept the idea that we can all agree to disagree. And this is a place for the exchange of intelligent ideas. This is not a place for us to feel like we have a monopoly on the truth. Okay, so I don't have a monopoly on the truth. I'm just telling you what I see from my point of view. And um, and and also at the end of the day. Those guys are millionaires. Kaepernick is a multi, multi, multi millionaire, and he ain't even 30 years old yet, I don't think. Maybe he's 31 now. I don't know. Jay Z is a billionaire. Are you a billionaire? If the answer is no, then get your money right, get your game tight, take care of your family. Don't be worrying about those people. I'm telling you, I, I spend time around celebrities. A lot of them don't care anything about what's happening with you and your kids. Go b build something of your own and don't be obsessed with, with what celebrities are doing. These people do not matter. I do not matter. The only extent to which I matter for you is if I can give you something of value that you can take home and use to build the empire in your house. Your house is your castle. My house right here, this this, this is my, my castle. I'm the king of this. So I really only care so much about what Jay-Z and Kaepernick are doing because I'm too busy running my empire over here. So run your empire, build for your family, Prepare for the next generation because life is short. You're going to be dead soon. We're all going to die, you know, within the next 30, 40 years, I'm sure, maybe 50 years, 80 years. I don't know. And 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 you can have a massive impact on future generations, but do not let them distract you with the nonsense. That's all entertainment. This is, their lives have nothing to do with yours. OK, so go build something for your family. You can do it. You can do it. All right. I'm out of here, guys. Once again, if you want to come hang out in Atlanta, go to drboyceatlanta.com. If you want to check out the financial workbooks, you can go to financialworkbooks.com. That's financialworkbooks.com. Uh, also, books like Powernomics, stuff like that. If you want to get you know get books like this for your library, just go to drboycebooks.com. That's drboycebooks.com. We have tons of books like these that you can put in your library to build your own university, educate your kids your way. That's what I advocate for. That's what I believe will make you successful. So take care, guys. Have a good day. I'll see you soon. Love you. Peace. Okay. Did you hear that? It was so disgusting. Yeah. The whole time he was just selling his product. 
And the Lord is calling us to galvanize ourselves as a nation. What Boyce Watkins just said right here is extremely Woody Lynch, slave-minded, divisive behavior. No other nation says, oh, the upper class are going to do their thing and we're going to do our thing. Do, do, and I hate to use Esau as an example, but I have to because they're so Willie Lynch. Do, do Esau tell them, oh, they're, they're, just, they're just doing their thing in the White House and we're going to do our thing down here? No. Or do they hold the White House and Congress and Senate um, accountable? They, they, they all, but they're all one together. Exactly. Do the Arabian community say, oh, the business class going to do their thing and we're just going to do our thing no. over here? Or they hold the business class accountable? Every We have a code. No one is beneath or above the code. You don't push some bullshit talking about other oh, celebrities over here and we over here. He pushing individualism. Individualism. Everybody, this is your kingdom. What the your, the hell? house, my the house. He said the house. I'm, this is my house. And I live my in, empire. I'm the I'm the kingdom of this empire. Motherfucker, Esau own your shit. Right. I don't I don't care if you pay cash for your house. If let you not pay your taxes and watch you take that shit from you. You don't own that. Pushing, you don't own the land that your house is on. He pushing individualism, and and when when, when all other nations move is one 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 band one sound. <laughs> That's the stupidest thing. And then he gonna I, say he gonna tell the nerd to tell the layman don't care about your celebrity class, and then have the nerd to tell the celebrity class they don't care about you. Is that not divisive? What do you mean? Slave man behavior is disgusting. I see why they call him Moist Watkins. He's so terrified of Esau, he wearing panties. <laughs> God damn. We love our people regardless. George Perez, the Latino billionaire, he didn't tell the the um underclass fuck them. He told Trump fuck you. I'm not exactly. going against my people. Exactly. That's how it goes. That's what you call a code. But and, and again, not this bullshit he's like, talking about. Just like they could trick y'all with a piece of spicy fiery chicken, <laughs> like they always put a moist Watkins in front of your face. He ha he talked with his intellect. He's so intelligent. Like he come off like he's a smooth talker with the intellect, and I got all this he's knowledge this about product. real estate and about this and this and this. You talking about shit I knew twenty five years ago, motherfucker, and I'm forty three. He ain't talking about nothing. He ain't talking about and nothing. He, but that's what I'm saying. He 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 he, he acts as if he's giving information or providing help. When I learned, I knew that shit twenty five years ago when I was a young boy. And no, no one would like this to be able to pull this on any other nation, but because we're a baby nation and we were Woody Lynch and slave white minded and indoctrinated, we don't know any better. These people, this this person, he's doing nothing but selling his product. Selling the he's product. He's selling more divisive Woody Lynch slave minded behavior. He's telling you you don't have to hold a, um, celebrities accountable, and he's telling them that they don't have to hold you accountable. We're a nation. From down in the hood up through Hollywood. And at the end of the this day, is very simple. And at the end of the day, he's saying, very... he's saying, listen to me, not the prophets. Yes. At the end of the day, that's what he's saying. This is very simple for other nations. And then he, he says some crap about um, there's no monopoly on the truth. Motherfucker, no the monopoly truth is the on truth. the truth. The truth is truth. Not some bullshit. What you're saying is a bunch of bullshit. That's not the truth. Moist Watkins. You know, I'm, I'm sick. Change of your panties. <laughs> you too fucking old. This to be guy, that dumb. He gives marriage advice and his ass is divorced. He, that's what I'm saying. He divorced, let alone how the, get married. How the hell you give any advice on marriage and you couldn't have a successful one? Yeah. And now I think, and you're still single now, which means you can't even find a, a new woman to love you. <laughs> but listen, no one has a monopoly on the truth. That's how he can tell And he you. don't have a monopoly on love <laughs> of a woman's love. <laughs> You you must be successful. You put yourself out there like you're successful, but why ain't no successful queen with you? Yeah. That tells me you you, you like a Uma, you, 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 you're half you half right, you half crooked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You need you need a queen to make you straight, but because you already wear pennies, you ain't gonna find one. <laughs> Sorry, you weak motherfuckers, it, it's over for y'all. Yeah, off with your fucking heads already. Yeah, I mean it's okay to be single, but you know when the real men can lead families. I mean, exactly. really, like, they can. I can you? I can imagine if he did have a wife. And, and some nigga um, look at, uh, touch his wife ass while they stand in line outside of a goddamn concert, he, he gonna tell his wife, just let it go, just let it go. <laughs> yeah, he seems like Just let it go. <laughs> they stop. Oh my he the type, no, he, I'm, I'm on my joking stage now. He the type nigga, if he had a wife, a nigga come up to his wife, hey, babe, what you with this nigga for? <laughs> and, and, you know, and he gonna keep looking straight. He gonna 
like the shit's not happening. Yeah, but he can tell you. But he can tell you don't, about don't, advice about all this shit. Right, and then don't listen. Like I said, that's a bunch of crap. That's really the enslaved man. The divisive behavior that ain't nothing but a sample. Somebody think about their own agenda. That is very divisive behavior. Any other nation, once again, for other nations, this is very simple. And they're it, upper class and they're in the and middle class and lower class still understand that there's a code and no one is beneath or above the code. And what so what he's telling you is a bunch of bullshit. And that video was disgusting. Yeah, and Mr. And Moist Watkins, I want you to do a reply video. I, 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 I want you to <laughs> say my name, say my motherfucking name like I told the rest of them <laughs> when you do. I don't do subliminals. Okay. And so, you know, this is what you guys need to remember. We love you. And like I said, you need to remember that no one is beneath or above the code. From down in the hood, all the way up through Hollywood Hills and everybody in between. No one is beneath or above our code. We love you. Anything you want to say, honey? I'm done. I'm I'm finna go and um I'm finna go take a nap because I think I think I need to go into the um the astral plane and fuck somebody up. And so we and that, that we just wanted to come on here and address those issues. The most how y'all told us to do it. We only come on when he tell us, you know. And um we we still handling kingdom business. We got to do some transitioning. We in the middle of getting ready to move to a to a newer home. And um you guys, we thank you. Uh, you know, just for listening, and we need more of your support. You know, um, we we love you, and we expect you guys to continue get on cold and stop being afraid of being a damn Hebrew. Damn, you're a Hebrew, really? Yeah, you don't call yourself. Ain't nobody going that won't admit that shit. Now it's gonna come a time that they are going to admit it. God's giving you some. But time. don't be a but bandwagon jumper because, like I said, it's it, you still gotta cross the, the fucking ride to get. Who? No one ever denies who they are but us. I don't know about... Listen, the Hebrew camps was funded by Esau. It is not a radical religion. It is your ethnicity. Okay? You can go get a DNA test. We have Shemitic blood. Okay? If you don't believe it. Semitic, not schematic. Well, I heard it's Shemitic. What's Shemitic, Shemitic. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> you know what we're talking about. But we love you and I let my husband... And um, at the end of the day, we love you. We do love you. I know we, it don't sound like it, but we want you all to make it. The new, th a part of the new thing that God is doing is He's not bound to two thirds not making it. Mm -hmm. He want everybody to make it, but you put yourself in that two thirds class by doing coon treasonous shit. <laughs> Stop doing it <laughs> yeah. because at some point you're gonna go to sleep. And that's where we all meet at, in the astral plane, in the astral realm. And you don't want to meet us there. And then, then these plagues start, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to go off real It's gonna go off real soon. We look forward. Rejoice and be glad, daughter Zion. Look, we're ready to get y'all out of here. It's about to pop off. I love you. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, my Hebrew nation. I want to thank you for listening to the video. And as always, I urge you to share it on all your social media platforms with all Hebrews. You can also visit our website at www.thiro.org to learn more about our mission and to donate towards the fulfillment of God's agenda. What is the agenda? Your donations will in part help the channel grow by supporting the business operations, but mainly and most importantly, funds will help us go before the United Nations to collect our reparations. Again, my name is Daria, and I am the servant of the Lord that the scriptures speak of in Isaiah 49. For I know that I have not come to convince you, but rather to fulfill a mission I was born to do. I walk in the office of a prophet and have been spiritually anointed by the Most High Yah. For Esau's reign is over, and the reign of Jacob has begun. Like many of the biblical prophets before me, such as Moses, they were given armor bearers, as referenced in scripture, Machai 6 and 4. Moses' armor bearers came in the form of his sister Miriam and his brother Aaron. I have been most honored 
that God has sent my Miriam and Aaron in the form of my beautiful and God-fearing wife, Aisha, who's also a prophetess. In closing, the time has come to begin the process of divorcing ourselves from this country and preparing our mind, heart, and souls to flee Babylon. We cannot go anywhere without money or land. The Lord is going to use me to drive out the Gentile northern horde currently squatting on our land by speaking judgments and plagues. Daughter Babylon and the European nations will be plundered and we will collect our reparations and return home. To my Arturian Council lightworkers scattered throughout the four corners of the earth assigned to assist and guide me in the completion of this mission, I say to you, I'm here. I'm ready. Let's do this. Shalom.